This video will cover an example of a collaboration tool in ASP.NET Core and SignalR. This can be akin to Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets or Microsoft Word or Google Docs or Taskade or other collaboration tools, VS Code Live, whatever you want, where work is being done on one side and then on the other side, a person is doing the work on the same document. And as the person is working here, the person on here wants to know what place the person is editing and kind of where the person is in the document. And you want to see the live updates. Otherwise, it's just confusing and you won't be able to work on the same document. Here, we're not going to have anything too complicated. We're just going to be moving squares around and seeing the changes on the other sides. We're going to start with the demo. I will open up the two browser windows here. You start the application by calling start with a username and then with a color to highlight the actions that we're going to be making. So you connect on the other side, we have Bob with the color RGB blue and here are the squares. So if I pick up the fourth square, you can see it highlighted with my color on the other side and then wherever I try to place it. If I try to place it, you know, before one, it's a little bit hard to see it there, but you can see it on the other places where I want to place it, right? So between six and seven, I place it there. I can take the nine, place it before the one, so on and so forth. So. What's the challenge here? What can we learn from this example that we cannot learn from the other ones? The lesson here is not really specific to this example. The lesson is rather, I think that I haven't specifically talked about and I really want to drive this point home. It's more of a performance versus safety concern. So let's go ahead and take a look at the application and see what it is that I'm trying to do here and uh, what I'm trying to avoid. First of all, in the startup, we have our authentication. Authentication is really simple. Same as in the notifications one, I'm supplying my user and color in the query parameters. So when I first connect, I have these things and they're available to me th from the user context. Uh, we have the relevant parts in the middleware. I have my state for the database. The other two, I mean, they should already be apparent. And then we have the square hub. So quickly looking at the state, this is an in-memory database. I got my database, I got my query, and I got my command for essentially updating the state. We're gonna talk about this move function in a drawing later on as something that performs a mutation and then commits to the database. So this will be important to perhaps remember or hold in your mind for now. So that's the state and it gets used in the square hub. In the Square Hub, we have a bunch of events. Well, not a, we have a couple of events, a drag event and then a user drag event. A drag event gets converted to a user drag event because here we don't have user context. Once we're inside, we have the user context. So we inject it in the user drag event, user context information, and we send it out. We have the send drag event, which is every time we drag, since we start dragging, we start sending these events. And then once we stop dragging, we send an end drag event and we stop dragging, right? And we do whatever is needed to show the visual cues for this as well. But that's essentially what is happening on the back end. This right here, you may seem like I'm breaking some rules that I've pre previously set out. I'm going to say like, we are not depending on anything SignalR. We're just getting something from the database. It's okay. It's a small application. And as long as you know what you're doing, you're fine here. Otherwise, follow the rules that you've set out for yourself. Plus, this is just a demo, so as long as I'm pointing out that I'm aware of it, it's okay. Now, in the index.html, there's going to be a painting here that we'll take a look in a second, but let's go ahead and start from the top. There's a bunch of uh, CSS stuff um, that I'm not going to cover. We're just using SignalR. The rest of the example is hand-built. We have the main container where we're going to be placing squares. Now, do notice that the state is just integers. We have nine squares in a specific order, and then we are just reordering them. So we're just putting them in different places in the array, right? Which the UI looks a little bit different, but this is going to be an important part of drawing the squares. And again, I'm going to talk about this function a little bit more in the drawing, but this is essentially a render function where I have some kind of centralized state and I want to trigger this function to stamp that state on the UI or to render the UI from this state. And this is primarily what it does. It, it clears the current state, it removes all the current children and it repopulates all the children's that the main container needs from whatever state that we have. It just so happens that the current state is really simple. So we can just grasp this really quickly. We just iterate, we assign the current number to the text content and we place an index in what order this is so we can manipulate it, right? 
So this is what's happening here, create indicator. This is to create this little indicator. So you will see here, it's on either one of the sides. So here I'm creating my own indicator to give myself a visual cue. If I have the two sides, it will also create the other indicator on the other side. I'm not gonna go over the specific code that is happening there. We have some global state for the connection for the thing that we grabbed and an indicator position. So as we're currently grabbing, we're gonna be sending events and uh, what, what position are we in? Where do we want to render the indicator on the other side? That is kind of what this is holding the state for. And then the main container, <laughs> this is just so we can interact with the main container, right? Put stuff there, take stuff from there, etc. This is our indicator, again, my own visual cue. And then this indicator is here. Now, not a lot of data is going in there, but because what we have is as soon as we start dragging, we are starting the communication and we're giving a lifetime to this activity of dragging, which is going to end. Uh, you're gonna be in many situations where there's gonna be a lifetime for some kind of real time activity and it's going to end. I'm gonna recommend to create a specific place just for memory management point of view uh, these events that we're sending here, the visual cue. Uh, so if I'm dragging, you will see the little bar being placed. It's not relevant to the state of the numbers. Where the current numbers are, it doesn't matter. It, the, the visual cue of where we're about to place, it's not gonna be saved in the database. It's only temporary. So this only gets stored on the client. And once I have the final event, I clear it, I garbage collect it, whatever you wanna call it. I free up this activity that we have stored up. So take note from separating your activity based state from the actual state that you want to save in the database. Nevertheless, this is where we started. We create a connection with the query parameters as I've stated before. We get all the squares. So this is gonna be important that we start with a bunch of state and we start with rendering the UI. We have the squares and we draw the squares here. The grab element function is this function which just takes care of all the logic of grabbing, grabbing an element, binding and binding events, dropping it back into the correct place and signaling the other side at the correct time. The logic here is not so much signal R, it's just JavaScript stuff and UI stuff. So I'll let you go over that yourself. We have two hook bindings and drag and on drag. This is when the user stops dragging. This is when we start or are dragging. A lot of the information here is again, UI specific, where where do we wanna draw, what position are we at, etc. However, I will just highlight that when we end dragging, we clear the current state for the activity. So whatever activity is not relevant to the actual state on the back end and that is being stored in the database, we're actually storing it in the client and we are garbage collecting. So we're storing it and getting rid of it. And then what we're doing is we're doing the same thing we did in the beginning. We are grabbing the state from the back end, using it as the source of truth and re-rendering the UI altogether. This might seem inefficient, but this is going to be an important point that we're gonna talk about. On drag events, again, uh, we just initialize the state if it's uh, not yet created. The rest of it is JavaScript, CSS stuff. Uh, a convenient function for sending the current place where we're dragging the grabbed element and then set indicator as well as on mouse move events. So once we grab, the object, we will start entering this logic here, which at the end sets the indicator here. And again, this is just to be able to do this stuff, which again, is not signal or related. What I want to talk about the most is the separation of this activity state, which is very, very temporary. So we don't store it in a database. We might, as if we're big tech and we want to monitor and learn from human activity, etc and the redrawing of the original state. So we're basically being very reactive, but not to the centralized state in a spa. So if I'd had view X and I changed the state there, it would automatically re-render my UI in all the special places. I am being reactive on the state from my backend. So what lesson do we wanna take away here? And uh, what is it that we specifically want to do? And what is it that we don't want to do? We're going to take a look at a drawing here. It might look a little bit confusing, but let's see if we can go through this. On the top side, it's the back end. On the bottom side is the client side. On the left is the way that you don't want to do it. On the right is the way that you do want to do it. 
We start here at the render function where we render the screen. At this point, the activity starts. This is the first line that happens here. The pink area is where the dragging happens. At the end here is where the dragging ends. So this is where we let go of the mouse button, the square gets placed and the UI gets re-rendered. The main difference between the bad and the good is this area right here. This is what makes the bad solution bad and the good solution good is either the presence or the lack of this function. What is this function and what does it do and how you can identify if this exists in your code. Uh, again, I'll just re-mention this temporal activity that the state of which is kept on the client and once we receive this final call, we essentially just take this bubble and we delete it. It's as if nothing happened. So we do not save it to the database unless we're big tech. What is this function and why is it bad? The reason this function is bad and what this function is, is it's a way to mutate state. So what happens on the final event here, as we're letting go of the square, we are taking note of the final place where we are keeping the square and we're saving it to the database and we're using the event. So this event right here is what gets sent here and is then used in this function here alongside with the state, which is what's in the database was used to render the function. This is essentially the same mutation as this. These two are identical. This is for your back end. This is for your front end. What happens in the good scenario is Again, we have the mutation function. However, the result, the state that happens here, gets written to the database, same as it happens here. However, this same state is what's being sent back to the render function and we're re-rendering the UI based on this state. We avoid creating this function right here and all is good. If you're wondering, why is it good? Isn't re-rendering the whole UI based on the whole state? Why do we have to send the whole state? What if my state is like two megabytes? At that point, you might have a little bit too much state and it's a separate problem. Why is this function bad? First, it's duplicate code. At, in our example, we only have one mutation, which is the move function. In reality, what might happen is, well, you might have a couple of functions and saving writing four additional functions for each mutation functions on the back end. These look like faces or tits uh, you choose, but we can just use the state constantly to regenerate the UI. So duplicate code is the first issue. The second issue is we have the initial state that we've started and then with every mutation applied. So let's say there is going to be mutation one, mutation two, mutation three. On this side, there is going to be mutation one, mutation two, mutation three. What you have to do is your functions, your mutations have to be so identical that as your mutations are stacking, you have to make sure that the state that is the result of all the mutations and the state on the back end, these two need to stay in sync. And as you're applying these mutations separately, it is actually very hard to make sure that both of these are in sync. And what I found that works way better is rather than using the events to keep the state in sync, what you want to do is build up the state on one side and then just sync it with the rest of your clients. Hopefully you understand the drawing and that helps you with the good side, no matter how many mutations happen on the back end, in the end, the state is just sent to the render function and the screen is re-rendered and that happens for all the clients. Hopefully you can see the benefit here. Uh, this will be the end of uh, what felt like a bit of a lecture. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section or ask them on my Discord server. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch. The live streams that we built, some of these examples have been pretty fun. I'll see you around and have a good day.